the Utah Jazz traded Donovan Mitchell, and they have now parted ways with Mitchell and Gobert, two players era. that brought them five straight postseason appearances. A number one seed as well. Now, for me, I think this is, this is one of the few Most times that we all saw the Jazz rebuild coming, and we kind of were chanting for it to, to happen because we knew they were stuck with their current roster. Was there a scenario where Donovan Mitchell could have stayed and they could have and Danny Ainge could have built around him? Yes. But I think this was the smartest move. Go into a full rebuild. They have multiple picks in the first rounds of 15. 2023, 2025, 2027, 2029, a boatload of cap space next summer. And Colin Sexton, four years, $72 million. That's 18 mil a year. Now, I think Colin Sexton, for me, he doesn't project as one of the better guards in the league. I think he projects as a high-level six-man potential starter on some teams. So I think at $18 million, it is a it is a good and reasonable contract for him. But the Jazz have a lot of players in their backcourt, and that's not even counting the veterans they have. Jared Butler, Colin Sexton, O'Shea Abaji, Malik Beasley, Talon Horton Tucker, Leandro Balmero, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Those are seven players that I'm not even mentioning, Mike Conley, and Jordan Clarkson. I don't know what the Jazz is going to do. It feels like they're trading, they're going to trade Clarkson and Bogdanovich next. I could see them trading Malik Beasley to open up some of these spots for these guards because Malik Beasley could help out a contending team. But yeah, this is a full on rebuild. Do I think it was a mistake for them to turn down the Knicks off for an RJ Barrett Emmanuel quickly? I do because I think the Knicks package was better. But ultimately, if the Jazz's goal is to tank in this draft, to get a Victor Wembanyama, to get a Scoot Henderson, then this was absolutely the right move. And it was about time that they tanked and they rebuilt this roster. Any agent did a fine job this offseason. Absolutely. Pretty much, I don't want to say he fleeced, but he did a good job getting great value out of the Rudy Gobert trade. And even though he missed out on the Knicks package, I still think he got an okay package from Cleveland. You know, you got Agbaji, you got four unprotected first round picks, if I'm not mistaken. You got Laurie, who's a fine player. And you got Colin Sexton, who at 18 mil, he is pretty much, that's his value in the league. From Cleveland, they got three and two picks of Three, okay, thank you. So, solid value. The Knicks one was better, but you still get good value. <clears throat> was My, it better because of RJ? Yes. Yes, and okay. Mitch. Are the Jazz making a mistake by valuing picks over a proven player who's actually going to be good? Who's the proven player? RJ, RJ Barrett. Maybe, because they ultimately took... They maybe took, Age wasn't in love with him. They took the deal where it's three unprotected, two pick yeah. swaps, and not just two unprotected, but you have RJ Barrett. Maybe... Any manual quickly. Maybe Utah's front office just didn't see what the Knicks see in RJ. Could Do be you possible. Think the Jazz didn't want that because they would be in a situation where they have to pay both not, of them. Not only that, but they're not drafting high with this with this trade package. They're going to suck. They're yeah. going to be really bad. Yeah, if it, you get RJ, all yeah, these guys, you could, you could it, be a decent. Like, I guess a they, they want to start fresh. Exactly. Like, where you no, just get no, picks. Yeah. No you don't screens, worry about No attachments. They want to yeah. start fresh, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, Jordan Clarkson and Bogdanovich, they're gone. Mike Conley, if they can try to get him out, he's gone. But he'll be gone by next season, anyways. So you try to get all those guys out. You just start fresh. I think this is just a start fresh. Malik Beasley will probably be going too. Chair Vanderbilt, does he get traded? Maybe. Pat Bev, they already got him out of here pretty fast. That was quick. It actually. just has to be as simple as in Danny Ainge, we trust if I'm the Utah Jazz. The Celtics basically did that for them, and you got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. You had one of the best trades in NBA history happen because of Danny Ainge with the Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett trade with the Brooklyn Nets. If you're the Utah Jazz, you literally have no choice but to put your entire faith into Danny Ainge because there's no real free agents that are coming in in the offseason to come sign with Utah. You have to trust Danny Ainge's ability to to scout, to draft at a high level because he's done it already. And with this move, you trade your two best players, two top 25, two top 30 players in Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. Now you have to win the draft from here on out. Because there's no real players that are going to come in the Austin that are going to come sign to come play in Utah. It's just the unfortunate truth of the yep. matter. 
I think that this was a, a good move for the Utah Jazz because it did not seem as if the Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell pairing was going to work out. And you did not want Donovan Mitchell disgruntled and his trade value to be lesser than what it was this offseason. This was as high of a, a value of you can get for Donovan Mitchell because he signed until 24-25 because of the player option that he has in 25-26. And he's played excellent basketball. The only issue is that he kind of gets injured from from time to time, especially when you need him most in the playoffs. But when he's in in the playoffs, he's one of the best playoff scorers we've ever seen. He's that great. He's that dominant. But the issue with, with Donovan and Rudy Gobert was that they just could not work because Rudy could not extend to the perimeter. But that's not on Rudy because they had no perimeter defenders to help out Rudy at all. I think that I'm perfectly fine with trusting Danny Ainge and, and wanting to, to build a new team around the Utah Jazz if you're if you're a Utah Jazz fan, your faith is literally all in Danny Ainge. I think this is looking back on it. When I first saw the Knicks package, I was like, "How do you pass up on that?" Because getting RJ being the best player in the deal, you trade Mitchell, but at least you get something to build around and at least tell your fran- fans like we have a direction. Right now, you have a direction, just in a different way that we don't have the guy yet. Right? We don't want RJ to be our guy, but with all these draft picks, we're gonna find someone in the draft to really come in and be a superstar level player and really rebuild this Jazz team. They have the perfect guy to do it. We saw Danny Ainge do it with Boston. Now, are they going to luck into Jason Tatum? You know, I don't know if that's going to happen. Anthony um, Black. Huh? Stop. <laughs> <his name. laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, the the, Celt- the Celtics deal is one. You could look at Ainge's track record and say, wow, that's amazing. But in reality, a trade like that is very unlikely to happen where you trade those two superstars, but then the Nets just completely collapse. Those two superstars, the next season, really just fall apart, even though they made the playoffs, but later down the road. So Danny Ainge has done some great things for Boston. Um, it's going to take some time with Utah, though. This is a, a team that is done really no talents. Uh, they're going to trade the rest of their veterans, but at least you have a ton of picks and a guy who knows what to do with those picks and make good trades. Stop sleeping on Anthony Black, man. I'm saying he's the only guy you say. <laughs> <laughs> there are four teams now actively tanking in the West. Who's the other three? I would still throw an OKC yep. into that. The Rockets, I, I would throw into just, that. I, the I, Utah I think Jazz a difference between tanking blatantly just being bad. That's facts. The Utah Jazz, the OKC Thunder, Rockets. the Houston Rockets, and the Spurs. I yeah, think I think the tanking. Rockets and OKC are just bad. No, I think OKC's been tanking. You think so? Yeah, but I do. You think they can win more than they actually win? I think it's possible. Well, players don't tank. No. Some of them really do. Though. Not really. Yeah. You're, you're paying for a contract. Yeah, yeah. If you're in a bad team, you probably have a one-year deal. Yeah. So like the you know Orlando that. Magic never went out there and said we're going to lose on purpose. Well, the Spurs don't tank. They're just not good. Yeah, some the teams Utah lack Jazz, talent. Yeah. The Utah Jazz in one offseason that Danny Ainge has been here, they have more first-round picks this decade than OKC started with Tough. in this decade. It's yeah. tough. I mean, you get a shit ton of picks. Age been cooking. OKC okay, started Cooks. the blueprint of of just hoarding picks. Small market teams. Danny Cooks. Utah Jazz. They're doing it now. Danny Cooks. It pays off. And they we, have a new coach in Will Hardy. We talked about last episode that OKC okay, just has Will Hardy. So much young coach. talent. It's the like, Jazz's where's, coach. Where's, I'm saying, like, where is he from? Uh, he's from the G League, I believe. He was an assistant on. No, he was an assistant on the Celtics. Oh, okay, okay, yep. okay. Right, Will That's, Hardy. Yep. Is he nice? Danny Ainge makes sense. He's the NBA's youngest coach. I'll just see. I'm sorry, I'm asking you a lot of questions. <laughs> Dude, Serena's about to lose. 34 years old. Ooh. Damn. Mike Conley, is he older than him? Might be. Wow. <laughs> Fucking nuts. Coaching the guy older than you. It's actually hilarious. Yeah. Danny Cooks. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. Emergency podcast reacting to the Donovan Mitchell trade. Riv, I'm disappointed. I thought she was going to come more aggressive. I was going to cook, but when all the fucking news came out, it was like I couldn't really, you didn't lose. And you had the facts. Yeah. You, you spoke nothing but them. I couldn't really lose. So it was like, you know, I did all that trolling early and I should have waited until more information came and out. And who knows? So. Fans gassed it. It's like Conor McGregor versus Anthony Pettis. What happened? Conor McGregor broke his leg. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Who no, they that's gas? not Anthony, Anthony Pettis. Pettis. That's, it wasn't uh, Anthony Pettis. It was Pettis. Dustin Poirier, I Dustin believe. Dustin Poirier, you're right, yep. Connor broke Dustin's. Yep. They was no, no, no. Connor broke his leg. He oh, went or for his a ankle. Kick. Of, I think he it went was for an a kick, and he defended, yeah. and he fucking yeah, made sorry, it. Sorry, fans. Uh, Woj c- cooked me. This could end up being a win for the Knicks. Oh, it will be. Because you could get a superstar next year, the year oh, after. We, who we got to stop. I'm just saying. I'm They're just trying saying. to get SGA. You see the SGA news we know, now. We know if they got Mitchell, it's they don't possible. make it. That, Bro, make that was so fun. You see now they're waiting for SGA to be like, I don't want to get out. They're going to try to throw it. SGA, I don't know. But No, we got the asses throw to SGA. Because Mitchell never really, like, he would have been great on the Nets, but 
didn't really fit. Like they're not. A well, they was running team, around here like a fucking parade. Like they was going. Well, it'd been the best t- player they've had in a long time. I mean, we Hello. were talking with the Jazz for two months. Yeah, that's nuts. The Knicks were. So this was, and when the Jazz got the offer from Cleveland, they didn't go back to New York to mm. ask if they wanted to match it. Yeah. Ultimately, I I it. do think the Jazz didn't trade with the Knicks because Danny Ainge didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I think that we gave them reasonable trade packages, and he was just being stubborn. Take what you got from Cleveland, whatever, be what it may be. But Donovan Mitchell, in my mind, should have been a Nick. Sorry, man. Mic drop. He should have been on the Knicks. 